Steve, thanks for coming to 160 Studios. Joe, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's good to have Appreciate you here, it. man. Um, Med Tech Vet, certainly <clears throat> a passion project for me, 100%. And, you know, the med tech industry at large. And I, I don't think enough of the med tech industry understands what the organization does, what it's about, its genesis. So if you could share it with us. Yeah, absolutely. So Med Tech Vets actually started um, at an AdvaMed conference, the idea in 2012. So it was Mike Minogue, uh, name that you're familiar with, and Alex Skorsky, another name that you're, you're familiar with. Two West Point grads, uh, both served in the military and both uh, CEOs in med tech met with a group of veterans for breakfast and uh, the group was essentially expressing their frustration in finding jobs in the med tech space. So right around 2014 is when uh, the group started as um, um, MVP vets. And uh, you know, it's essentially been in existence for about 10 years now. And the mission of the group is to help military veterans uh, find uh, careers with purpose in the med tech industry, primarily through education, mentoring, and networking. And uh, it's a great organization. Yeah. So you get Gorski and Minogue at a table, something's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Other than just breakfast. Right, right. Yeah. Action-oriented, let's, let's make something happen. Right. And, 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 and you've just joined MedTech Vets. You've had a pretty uh, illustrious career as well in MedTech. And you're, yeah. you're president of MedTech Vets? Yeah. So my, my current title is president and executive director okay. of MedTech Vets. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm a West Point grad. Mike Minogue and I are actually classmates. Uh, from West Point, we both served in the military. So I was uh, I was a platoon leader uh, during the first Gulf War, Operation Desert Storm. So I was in a tank unit, spent time um, in Saudi Arabia, Iraq, and Kuwait, and um, you know, really it was an honor to uh, serve alongside soldiers in, in a combat zone. And then after the army, uh, I actually went to work for a, a chemical company for ten years. I was a sales rep and a district manager. And the way I got into med tech was, again, Army friend and classmate, Mike Minogue, was at GE Healthcare. He helped me network into getting a job as a pet specialist. So I was uh, supporting the sales team in the mid-Atlantic selling uh, positron emission tomography for cancer detection. And then moved over to Abumed uh, 2005. I was a sales rep, I was a region director, I was a national sales director and key accounts director. So it was, it was a great experience. Um, you know, it was great working alongside really talented and motivated people. The technology was, uh, was new and innovative. But I would say the best part was really seeing the impact on the patients, mm. right? Seeing an Impel device used in a heart attack patient and then seeing the patient recover native heart function uh, was awesome. And then getting to interact with the families, mm. seeing the impact on, on spouses, on kids, on grandkids, um, nothing better. It was tremendous. Yeah, and and I mean, Mike made that front and center with patients. I mean, or Abby made that made that front and center with patients. Is is the insinuation of pulling the person who built the Impella device <clears throat> and the manufacturing floor. You know, I've I've been at Abby Med a couple dozen times, and the number of patient days you have, and and you actually see the person, you meet the person who made the Impella device that went into you. Right, absolutely, R really powerful. You know, to be able to talk to, again, to the patient and the family, and then have them interface with um, not only the field of sales and clinical team, but the engineers that design the device, uh, really just, really just awesome. Yeah. And I think some of that comes from the culture that Mike, built there, um, and, 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 and I, know, I don't want to make this a Minogue piece, it's a MedTech Vets piece, but that culture, that drive, that passion, that patient first mentality um, has translated over to the MedTech Vets environment um, as, okay, let's put the Vets first now, right? They're coming out, they did their time, mm -hmm. or they had spent time, uh, and, and we just expanded now West Point and Annapolis, so we can cut into that as well. Right. But there's a time to honor what's been done before somebody got there. Meaning that when the Impella device was delivered to a patient, somebody built that. When a vet shows up at a med tech interview, 
he or she did something previous to getting there that was probably well beyond the commitment of what most people do. And, and that was what drew me to MedTech Vets and now being privileged enough to be a board member. Um, so, so, you know, what's the, what's the sort of the drive of MedTech Vets at large? Yeah, it's a great, it's a great observation, Joe. Um, you know, I would say that the common, the common theme between serving in the military and serving in MedTech Vets or in the MedTech industry is the sense of duty and service and purpose, right? So in the military, you were serving the country and, um, you know, moving into the med tech space, you know, that translates really well. The idea of service, purpose, uh, duty, uh, you know, it's the same mentality when dealing with a physician and a patient as it was serving, serving in the military. And it really, it really lends to generating credibility and trust when you interface with coworkers and customers. Um, I guess that was, that was my observations in linking, uh, you know, all the organizations. Yeah, so when I think about yeah. military, you know, it's, it's team before self. It's mission driven. Definitely. Does that attract people in general to a West Point or an Annapolis? Um, or do you go there and you understand the true meaning of mission driven? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I would say I'll, I'll give you my, pers my personal experience. Mm. It was the reason why I went to West Point was because it was, it was really important for me to serve the country. And that was that was my main reason, um, and I've talked to others now that I'm you know away from it for a long time, whose kids are entertaining going that route, whether West Point, Annapolis, any other service academy, and really the only question I ever ask is you know why are they why do they want to go, and I've heard a variety of answers. I've heard my son or daughter is getting recruited to play a sport, or you know the uniforms at the Army Navy game are really cool. Uh, you know, I really liked watching the Blue Angels. Um, you know, I, I really enjoyed watching Top Gun, and I think that would be, you know, would be fun to do. Uh, and all those are reasons, but really the only reason I, I think is, is that matters is, um, you know, the sense of purpose, the service, the purpose, the duty. Because uh, you can go to school anywhere. You can, you know, you can play sports anywhere. You can do all these other things pretty much anywhere else. Um, that was my draw, was the sense of you know, service, purpose, duty. Um, and I'm really glad I did it. Looking, looking back on it, um, it, was, it was a great experience. As a leader now in an organization that is um, sourcing talent out of a very you know, unique populace, and right now again, Naval Academy, West Point, what do employers maybe not understand on that, on that subject? What do they not understand that they're getting at a core base and other things can be taught or led apart? Yeah, another great question. You know, I would say that all the skills taught in the military are transferable to the civilian world, whatever the profession is, particularly med tech, because of the duty and the purpose and the service. But the things that I, I personally learned in the military that have helped in my life and in, in my career, you know, things like integrity, perseverance, um, you know, having a positive outlook on things, uh, work ethic, leadership. Um, you know, those are things that, you know, as a young person, I learned and I've seen others learn that translates well. And, you know, the thing that really stood out to me in going, you know, going to the med tech world was that I didn't do that right out of the Army because there really weren't a lot of sophisticated uh, programs like there are today, transitioning programs like like MedTech Vets, like SkillBridge. A lot of the companies will have commercial leadership type programs. A lot, a lot of that didn't exist uh, early 90s when, when I was transitioning. So what really spoke to me in coming here especially is that there was, there was a very select group of mentors and coaches that helped along the way and really got to a point where I felt like it was, it was time you know, to give back. So Army veteran with a lot of years in MedTech um, you know, time to give back and, and help others. Because, you know, veterans of, of, you know, any background, particularly the, you know, the service academies, um, you know, given leadership opportunities at a young age, can be, can be taught some of the other things. Um, you can't really teach integrity, but you can teach um, somebody how to cover an impella case. Mm -hmm. That's something that can be taught. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. um, with a strong work ethic and appropriate mentorship. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would say at the core, the core values are, are you know, the basis. And then the technical skills are something that can be taught and learned with appropriate mentorship. You, know, you bring up a really interesting point that just dawned on me as you were sharing that. <clears throat> My guidance and I, uh, you know, I, I advise a lot of companies on what does the best team member look like in your organization. And I said, there's a couple things only that you, at the core base that you need to interview for. One is cognitive intelligence because you can't fix stupid, right? So, so cognitive intelligence is really important. And then, you know, the, the organizational, is somebody really well organized? Um, that's really important. And then to me, integrity is another, right? Because there's nothing more dangerous than a really smart, well-organized person with no integrity in the world. And so I think that somebody makes it through Annapolis or West Point I think it attracts somebody. Again, attracting and making it through are two different things. So, you know, when people say, well, you know, Harvard, Yale, Columbia, MIT, grad, you know, really smart people come out of there. No, there's a screening process to get in. So they're already at that IQ level. Your IQ level doesn't elevate when you're at, West, at, at uh, Columbia or Yale or MIT. Um, now, your social values may get compromised, but that's my statement, not yours. But the same thing with West Point. I think you, to get in, you've got to demonstrate integrity. To get in, you have to demonstrate IQ. To, to get in, you have to demonstrate responsibility. And like, it's got to be viscerally implanted. And then when you graduate, it's a validation of that. And I think it's important for employers to think about that as a combine skill, as the NFL looks like. What's your 40-yard four, dash? What's your flat back bench? How many you know, body weight, you know, uh, uh, chins can you do, et cetera. Right. And, and, and <clears throat> most things can be taught after that. So uh, where, where I'm going with this is MedTech Vets also recently expanded its cohort of not just transitioning grads, but grads who have been in MedTech, who have de demonstrated excellence, high performers, and then now are looking again in MedTech. You're right. So the, the the current the current program as it exists right now, um, formerly known as the academy, we're we're, we're relabeling it because it caused confusion. Um, we're calling it the MedTech Vets program. So essentially, MedTech Vets program is a seven week uh, virtual training program, and it focuses in on things like uh, goal setting in MedTech, like writing a resume in civilian language, like digital footprint with LinkedIn. Uh, interviewing best practices. We'll invite um, uh, business leaders, uh, and I think you've participated in this before several times, uh, sales directors, HR leaders, um, search firm executives, to really do one-on-one -on -one interviews and prepare them for the real interview. We call it a mock interview session. And then um, includes networking with some of the partner companies. And then it finishes with a capstone presentation. And you and I were talking about that earlier. I know you've participated in that. So capstone for the, for the audience is essentially we ask the fellows that go through this program to uh, talk about their skill sets and their interest level. And we try to marry that up with our partner companies as far as um, jobs that are available in a capstone presentation. So that's the, the week seven or the, the final. So that's as it exists today. So some of the feedback that we've gotten from some of our partner companies is you guys do a great job at, uh, at placement, for example. We have a 95% placement rate. Um, and the retention rate is also pretty good, 84%. So not only do the, these graduates through MedTech Vets, they get the job, but they, they also stay there because they perform. Mm -hmm. So in the spirit of constant improvement, the feedback that, that we've gotten is it would be great if you could not only prepare this group for uh, the interview and, and, and getting the job, but also prepare them for success after they're hired. That will give you um, a leg up. Like we'll give them a leg up, right? So we're gonna add things to the, the core program and we're calling it the MedTech Bets Executive Program. And MedTech Executive Program, we're gonna start it off with a, with a core group. So we're gonna focus in on, on West Point Annapolis graduates to begin with. And the reason why is because that's really our, our network as it exists today. And we wanna make sure that when we launch this, uh, that we do it right. And we, you know, anytime we launched a new product or new technology at GE or AbbeyMed, we always started with a, with a pilot or a small group. 
And then once we uh, determined best practice, then we would open up to a broader audience. That's kind of the intent with this. Got it. So some of the topics that we're going to include in this are things like uh, healthcare economics. So as an Abiumed person in, uh, in, at any level, if you spoke to an uh, administrator, they would expect you to know the basics of healthcare economics. So reimbursement rates, DRG payments, CPT codes, uh, return on investment, um, cost effectiveness. Those are things currently that we have not taught. We're going to include that in the executive program. We're also going to include a session with, um, with uh, physicians and administrators. So we have a whole long list of doctors uh, amongst the board of directors uh, and, and probably with your network that have agreed to help us um, with this executive program. So, um, you know, sharing expectations of a, a marketing person or a, a med tech device person or a clinical rep uh, coming from a heart failure physician or a surgeon or a cardiologist, we thought would add a lot of, a lot of value. Uh, same with senior level administrators. CEOs, CNOs, uh, service line VPs, really good perspective. We're going to add some of those people as well. And then we're also going to add in things like um, presentation skills. Um, there's a guy on our board, Mike Grice and Rob Nooner, started uh, Boost Oxygen. They were on Shark Tank, and they were actually funded by one of the sharks. And Boost has been in, around now, as in a lot of the major s stores uh, globally, I believe. And um, Mike has agreed to be our presenter for presentation skills and interviewing. So I think he's, he's, he's well qualified and it'll, it'll make it a, a fun session. Uh, and then we're also going to include uh, strategic business planning after action reviews. Right? So in, in my career, I've spent a lot of time teaching new reps how to, how to generate a strategic business plan. Uh, you know, looking at strategy, looking at tactics, looking at resources needed, personnel overview, that type of theme. And then um, we brought after action reviews, which is a mil military terminology, to Abiumed. And I think really that was, that was, a, that was a turning point in the company because it really um, created this culture of constant improvement. So after our action review asked four, asked four specific questions. What was the plan? What actually happened? What did we learn? And who else needs to know? So instead of working on a project and you know, I didn't do my part and you call me out, it's more or less a team holding each other accountable. And the goal is perfection. And at a minimum, we, we just want to make sure that the next time we do it, it's, it's better than the previous time. So uh, incorporating that in a business plan is, is really something that's powerful. Um, and then the rest of it is very similar to the, the, uh, the other program. So the way we've been describing this is the current program, MedTabets program, I would say is an undergrad degree. And the executive program is, is the master's degree or advanced degree to make sure that when we place uh, some of these leaders that they uh, are prepared for success. In the talent access, talent acquisition world, I like to use the word talent access, is a lot more respectful, nobody should be acquired, it's access. In the talent access world, you know, oftentimes you've got um, the initiatives and organizations, and this is my opinion, that we, we want to make sure we have a diverse slate of individuals for all the searches we do. And oftentimes it'll be underrepresented um, uh, 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 individuals in, in, let's say, the medtech space in particular. And that would be, you know, people of color, that could be uh, females, whatever that underrepresented is. I've, I've always wondered, and why are we not including individuals who have sacrificed all or parts of their career, sacrificed time away from their families, sacrificed, you know, tough environments, you know, whether it's Desert Storm or Afghanistan or others, and then did so for the greater good of our country. And, and, and you know, I oftentimes want to lobby, why are we not including those on, hey, talent partner, I want to see on my slate, you know, people of color, females, and I want to have on there a veteran who served our military, served my family, served my community. It still kind of irks me that that is not in that same category. I agree. <laughs> As well you should, man, because you lived it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I, I think that population is, is definitely underrepresented in MedTech, no question. Um, you know, people of color, women, and, and veterans. 
and they have a they have a lot to offer. I've worked with many of them, very talented. Um, there's there's no question that especially you know veterans of any color and any gender um, have a lot to offer any company, particularly in medtech. Yeah, uh, and 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 I really would. I'd like to, I'd like to challenge. You know, I've got usually about 170,000 sets of eyes on me every day on LinkedIn. I would challenge is that the talent access leadership, the C-suite, needs to start to consider, say, this, this person made a real-time current level and their family made a real-time current level sacrifice on behalf of our country to our country. Mm -hmm. And now they want to transition in or they have transitioned in already into the MedTech community. I would like to include them as part of the slate as we look at talent moving forward. So that's my challenge. It's not Steve's challenge. He's got to be more politically correct than I do. That's my challenge to you as a leader, as a talent access leader, as a hiring manager. For gosh sake, let's get more coverage of vets in our talent slate because I've been dealing with MedTech vets for a number of years now. And I can't tell you how many people, even independent of that, come across and have spent years and years in MedTech and our, our, our grads or military. Look, some of the best field service people are people who came out of enlisted military, maybe never got a four-year degree, but you want to talk about capability, teachability, grind, pushing it through, commitment to the team. Like I've always told clients, and there are organizations for years have said, you know, Stryker did it <clears throat> for a number of years. Mm -hmm. They've gotten away from it a little bit over the last couple of years, but Stryker for a long time was hiring college athletes and um, uh, military veterans. It was almost a playbook for their commercial team. Mm -hmm. No question, yeah. I mean, I have a, even my own, my own family. Uh, my dad was enlisted in the Navy right out of high school because he didn't have any money to go to college. So he was an apprentice at uh, you know, the Navy Yard in Philadelphia for several years and ended up going to night school for eight years and um, grad school for another four years at night while working. So I think he got his, his undergrad degree from Drexel when he was 32, and he was 50 when he got his master's. Um, but a lot of things you said, you know, he learned as an enlisted person in the military. Yeah, you're, you're, you're taught how to, how, to, how to lead, follow, sort of interpolate, MacGyver, right? You, yeah. You're taught that, right, by, by design. Yes. Adapt, improvise, and overcome. There you go. And, yeah. and, and rarely do you have them complain. I put a post on LinkedIn today. I'm like, complaining gets you nowhere, <laughs> right? And, and, and I think that probably cohort doesn't complain much. So, you know, as, as, as we close out, what are the opportunities for somebody to support MedTech vets? Yeah, a great question. Um, there's a number of ways. You know, I would say the, the primary way you'll see on the website is through the mentorship program. So, uh, and you and I talked about this earlier today. My personal experience and everybody that we've, that we've interviewed has told us that if you have uh, an active, engaged coach or mentor assisting you either in the transition from the military to the civilian world or transition from an existing position in med tech to somewhere else in med tech, having that mentor is, is, is critical. So that was one way. So right on the medtechvets.org website, there is a link uh, called mentors or mentor program, and you can sign up as a mentor. That's that's one way to, to get involved. And we have currently we have, I just looked at it the other day. We have about a hundred mentors in the U.S. through MedTech Vets. So there's an opportunity to, you know, create a, a much larger number because I know there's many veterans within AdvaMed alone that uh, that could get involved as a mentor. The other way, and you had said it earlier, is uh, hire veterans. I mean, I personally, when I was a sales director, I hired veterans, and and you know the thing that I, I always appreciated was the, their service mentality, and related to that well, and they were quick learners. They were they were very hard workers, and they were great teammates. Mm -hmm. That was what really um, stood out when we when I personally hired veterans. So that would be another way. Um, you know, and then MedTech Vets is a nonprofit organization, so we're a 501c3, and up until uh, this year, we've been fully funded by by donations. That would be another way to support MedTech Vets. Good. And then I know we're working. Um, the board is working on um, creating even a um, better UI UX of engaging with MedTech Vets 
getting access to the talent that's in there, and then being more well informed about what's going on. So, um, you know, to me, it's a call out to the med tech industry is to support those that had supported you um, with the choices that they made um, as far as service to our country. And then they want to transition now into service to the patient, which is what we're all here for. So, Steve, really appreciate the time. Joe, I appreciate the time with you. And uh, I've always enjoyed uh, talking to you, especially about supporting veterans and transitioning veterans. And uh, really appreciate the opportunity. You got it. I'm Joe Mullings from 160 Studios. Be well.